Hey everybody, it's me, Loren Malloy. It's Let's Party with Loren time. Today I'm solo for a very good reason. I wanted to take a special moment to start our very first episode off with a moment of silence for Black Lives Matter. It's a big deal. It absolutely is. We have been dealing with this for a very, very long time. And I thought about it long and hard and I wasn't even gonna do a let's party with Loren right now between the rioting and the looting and all the people who've been harmed and hurt and killed. And all of us are stressed out and afraid and hurting and some are having it much worse than others. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a show today because of everything our country and our world is dealing with right now but i will not be silent i don't think it's okay to be silent black lives matter that is the most important thing right now so we're gonna play a bunch of games and we're gonna have some fun and next week we're gonna have a few guests and have a whole new theme and topic so get your drinks and let's have a good time as best as we can. But please, let's take a moment right now, no matter your faith or religion, if you believe in anything or nothing, please take a moment with me and let's be silent and pray and thank all good thoughts and wishes to change this outcome for the best. Annihilate and abolish racism forever, permanently. For the lives that have been lost, a moment of silence, please. Thank you. I just want to say to whoever watches this and shares this, thank you. I want to speak out about it, but I also want us to try to have a little bit of fun in a matter that really isn't fun at all. So let's take a moment together and play a little game. This game is called African American Actors. Just 10 quiz trivia questions and let's see at the end, how many people got them right, all right? So, at the very end of all the 10 questions, by the way, I'll come back and give the answers. So, take your time and think about it. First question, Will Smith starred in the entertaining Legend of Bagger Vance. What sport was featured in the movie? Golf, tennis, billiards, bowling. Question number one, put your answer in the comment. A, B, C, or D? Golf, tennis, billiards, or bowling? Ready? Question number two. Which of these movies starred Wesley Snipes? Jungle Fever, Independence Day, Driving Miss Daisy, for Love of Ivy, which of these movies starred Wesley Snipes? Which of these movies starred Danny Glover? Mississippi Masala, Grand Canyon, The Incident, One Potato, Two Potato. Question number four. Denzel Washington starred in what John Grissom, sorry, Denzel Washington starred in John Grissom's Pelican Brief. Who are the victims of the crimes in that movie? Senators, cabinet members, Supreme Court justices, members of the House of Representatives. Who are the victims of the crimes in Pelican Brief? Five, what ultimately happens to Morgan Freeman in Shawshank Redemption? Ready? He is released from prison. He dies in prison. He escapes from prison. He remains in prison. Ready? Next question. Take your time. Think about it. Put an answer. 
Question number six, which of the following does not star Denzel Washington? Does not star Denzel Washington. Kiss the Girls, John Q, Crimson Tide, Courage Under Fire. Think about it. Which does not star? Mm. Seven. Wesley Snipes stars in Murder at 1600. Who plays one of the suspects? John Ritter, Ted Danson, Tom Selleck, Alan Alda. Put the answers below. Number eight, Danny Glover did a fine job in The Color Purple. Who wrote the novel? I wonder if you know. Maya Angelou, Alice Walker, Joyce Carol Oates, Tony Morrison. Number nine, who played Reuben Carter? I know some of you know this one. Let's see how many do. Danny Glover, Wesley Snipes, Denzel Washington, Will Smith. Last question, which actors starred in Glory? Morgan Freeman and Danny Glover, Wesley Snipes and Danny Glover, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington and Wesley Snipes. Ooh. All right, what are your answers? Make sure you comment below, one through 10. Giving you guys a few extra seconds to think about it. Don't worry, we're gonna have a little more fun. While you're thinking and putting your answers in, let me tell you about my drink, because it is Thirsty Thursday. Make sure you use your hashtags. I am drinking orange juice, coconut rum, lemon seltzer, and pineapple slushy. I mixed it all together, it's delicious. Now guys, just as a reminder, I have a coupon code for you so you could have a drink with me. Drizzly, D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Save $5 instantly. I am going to make sure I copy and share this wonderful link so you all guys can save at least $5 and get yourself a drink. Have it sent to your house. You'll be able to use it next time too if you'd like. It's a lot of fun. That way you can plan what drink you're going to have for next Thursday, Thursday. Next Thursday, Thursday, we're going to have all sorts of fun games with a lot of celebrities, guests, and more. You'll see. Come on by, of course. Now, let's go over these answers. Number one, Will Smith starred in the entertaining Legends of Bagger Vance. What sport was featured in the movie? The answer was golf. How many guys got it right? How many of you guys got it right? Question number two, which of these movies starred Wesley Snipes? The correct answer was Jungle Fever. Driving Miss Daisy was Morgan Freeman. The Ivy Mode movie was Portier and the Day movie was Will Smith. Which of these movies starred Danny Glover? I wonder what your answers were. The correct answer was Grand Canyon. Number four, Denzel Washington starred in John Grissom's Pelican Brief. Who are the victims of the crimes in that movie? I don't know what your answers were, but the correct answer was Supreme Court Justices. That's right. What ultimately happens to Morgan Freeman in Shawshank Redemption? Let's see. He is released from prison. Oh, yeah. It's a good movie. Which of the following does not star Denzel Washington? If you said kiss the girls, you are right. Yeah, it's a good movie. I wonder how many of you saw it. Number seven, Wesley Snipes stars in Murder at 1600. Who plays one of the suspects? If you said Alan Alda, you are correct. Good job. 
Number eight, Danny Glover did a fine job in the color purple. Who wrote the novel? If you said Alice Walker, you guys are right. Good job. Number nine, who played Reuben Carter? That's right, the correct answer, Denzel Washington. And lastly, number 10, which actors starred in Glory? The correct answer, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman. That is right, guys. So how many of you actually got that right? Anybody get 10 out of 10? Huh? Did you, did you? Well, don't worry. We have more fun stuff coming up. Let's see, let's see. Now, please remember, feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Ask me any questions you'd like. I remember this will be the only time we're doing this. After today, we're gonna have very different kind of games and things we're gonna discuss. So make sure you um, like and follow Let's Party with Loren, because every Thursday, Thursday, Thursday at 8 p.m., we're gonna party together. So this game is a little different. This game is all about who said it. Yes, that's right, it's who said it time. Now, feel free to write it in the comment section. Feel free to share this video with everyone you know. The more you share, the better it's gonna be for all of us. Hi, Donald, yes, hi. Um, just so you guys know, this is a 420 friendly show. I am a medical marijuana card carrying member. I have a lot of health issues that legally allow me to have a card. So this is also one of my ways to get the word out there and the fun of it out there that it's something scary and dangerous. You're not gonna melt into your couch. You'll be fine and maybe evil, even heal and have some fun. It's good stuff. All right, so right now we're gonna play a completely different kind of game. It's 11 of the most memorable black movie quotes. All right, let's see if you can figure out the movie by the quote I tell you, all right? So let's take a few minutes and think about it. Now first, did everybody order with Drizzly? Make sure you order your drinks. Did everybody get your drink ready? We all know I got my drink. Yes, that's true. I got my drink, do you? Now, before we move on, I wanna make sure that everybody has liked the page. Make sure you follow the page and please make sure you turn on those notifications so that when I go live, you don't miss out because after this episode, we are definitely gonna have giveaways and more, all right? So this is gonna get more fun and a lot more crazy soon, but today, Let's start with the, the 11 most memorable black movie quotes. First one, bye Felicia. What movie? Can you guess? Giving you guys a few seconds. If you guessed Friday, you're right. All right, here's the next one. You show is ugly. What movie is that quote from? Think about it. Do, 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 do. Never mind, I don't want to get in trouble with Facebook. <laughs> I'm not going to sing that kind of music and get in trouble, right? <laughs> All right, guys. The quote from the movie is You show is ugly. What movie? If you said the color purple, you're right. Next, sexual chocolate. Oh yeah, sexual chocolate. What movie? If you said coming to America, you're right. Good job, good job. Sit your $5 ass down before I make change. What movie? Do you know? Can you guess? Ah, New Jack City. 
All right, here's another one, and I won't be able to do it justice the way he did, but, oh, I say it, and I say it again. You've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok. This is what he does. Can you guess? What do you think? It's an amazing moment in that movie. Any ideas? If you said Malcolm X, you are absolutely right. Next up, make that money, girl. Don't let it make you. What movie? Do, 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 do. <laughs> If you said the Players Club, you are absolutely correct. Good job. I wonder how many you're getting right. Let's see. Here's the next one. The secret is you got to get coordinated. Once again, I apologize. There's no way I can do any of these quotes the right kind of justice because we all know the actors who played these parts and have these incredible famous quotes. There's no way I can do it how they did because epically they on those characters. So the quote, the secret is got to coordinate. One more time. The secret is you got to coordinate. The movie, Boomerang. Let's see about this one. Ready? Here's the next movie. Here's the next quote. You are the perfect verse over a tight beat. I love this movie. Dude, if you haven't seen this movie after the show, go find it and watch it. I love this movie. If you said brown sugar, mm, you're right. It's a good movie. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. What movie? What do you think? The Temptations is right. Which ones do you got it? All right, this one's a real short one and there's no way for me to do it justice, but I'm gonna try anyway, right? I da poppy. There's no way I did that right. I da poppy. Once again, there's no way I could do it justice the way they've done it. That's why it's famous and why they're epic. So, I da poppy. What movie? If you said life, you're right. Okay, here's the last one. King Kong ain't got shit on me. What movie? If you said Training Day, you are absolutely correct. Good job. Good job. Good job. Time for a drink. Cheers. <laughs> now, guys, feel free to let me know where you're located, where you're watching from. Please let me know you're safe. Once again, make sure you like and follow the page. Let's party with Loren on Facebook. And remember, Thirsty Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be partying like this again. But even more fun because I have guests for you. Oh, the guests I have coming. So you guys ready for another game? I know you are. It's going to be fun. So have a drink. Tell me what you're drinking. Are you smoking? What are you smoking? Tell me. I love hearing. I love discussing beverages and 420 related stuff. So make sure you leave it in the comments and let's do our next trivia question and answer. This time it's about black history. Ready? In which year were the first African slaves brought to Virginia? It's a tough one. See if you know it. The answer, coming up. Next question. Nah, just kidding, I'll give you the answer. All right. In which year were the first African slaves brought to Virginia? The answer, 1619. And we're in year 2020, still dealing with racism, which is why I'm doing this episode for this reason. Which colony was the first one to legalize slavery? Yeah, 
That's yucky. The answer, Massachusetts. Who was the first black astronaut to walk in space? Leave your answers in the comment if you'd like. Let's see if you get it right. Bernard Harris Jr. was the first black astronaut to walk in space. Which activist had a critical hand in organizing the 1963 March on Washington, D.C.? That's a tough one. The answer, Bayard Rushton. What was the first American state to ban slavery? Think about it, what's your answer? Hi, Karen, how you doing, gorgeous? Please make sure to share and feel free to answer in the comments section, all of you, what your answers are. It's okay if you don't know any of these answers, by the way. The fact that most of us don't know these answers is kind of part of the problem also, which is why I'm doing it. We need to end racism now, not in another 20 years, not in another generation to deal with the baggage and nonsense of racism at all. So that's why today we're doing uh, Let's Party with Loren special edition. So what was the first American state to ban slavery? The answer? Congratulations, Vermont. That's pretty epic. The answer is Vermont. Yes. I'm very happy to hear that. Very cool. Why not? Guys started somewhere, right? What is the name of the first black newspaper? What do you think? Freedom's Journal. Yep. What is the name of the first black newspaper? Freedom's Journal. Okay, ready? Next one. Who was the first black actress to be nominated for the best actress category in Academy Awards? I'm going to say it again. Who was the first black actress to be nominated for the best actress category in Academy Awards? Ready? Any ideas? The answer? Dorothy Dandridge. Yes, that's right. Glorious Dorothy Dandridge. If you don't know who she is, look her up. She's awesome and incredible. Let's see. Ah, now remember, Dorothy Dandridge wasn't actually, she didn't actually win. She was just nominated. So the next question is, what is the name of the first black actress to win an Academy Award for Best Actress? To win an Academy Award for Best Actress. What was her name? The answer, Halle Berry. Congratulations, Halle Berry. I can't imagine how amazing that must have felt for you. That's awesome. Next question, ready? Who was the first black model on Vogue magazine's cover? That's also a big deal. Most people don't realize how difficult it is to get on a cover like that. So the answer is Beverly Johnson. Congratulations. That must have been an amazing feeling for you. Well, at least I hope it was. Next question. Who was the first black American woman to win Miss America pageant? What do you think? The answer, Vanessa Williams. How amazing. Here's a real big deal one. Let's see how many of you know this one. What does Juneteenth signify? Once again, this is a huge deal question. What does Juneteenth signify? The answer is the end of slavery in the United States. 
not the end of racism, but the end of slavery. Juneteenth, it's a big deal. Here we go. Who is cre credited with creating the blood bank? Who is credited with creating the blood bank? The very first one. Charles Drew. That's a pretty big deal, and now we know his name. Question. Which piece of legislation prohibits discrimination based on race, religion, sex, color, or religion? Oh, it's in there twice. That's weird. I caught that. Which piece of legislation prohibits discrimination based on race, religion, sex, or color? The answer, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Do you guys realize... 1964 was not that long ago, and we needed a piece of legislation to prohibit discrimination based on some basic common sense stuff. Don't judge me on my gender. Don't judge me on how much melatonin I have in my skin. Base me on my words, actions, deeds, skills. And, the, and we only have the Civil Rights Act as of 1964. That's not that long ago, guys. And we're still fighting to have it be equality. It's only 56 years ago, guys. My father's older than that. Which president signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Guys have any answers? Any thoughts? Hi, Yannick. God, we've been friends for so long. <laughs> it's so awesome to see you. I hope everything's safe in Canada. Stay safe for sure. Good job, Roberta. Yes, that is the right answer. Guys, if you were wondering what this answer is about, the Vanessa Williams has to do with um, who won um, the Miss America pageant, and that was Vanessa Williams. And she did that in 1983. Yep, yep. So where were we? Which president signed the Civil, Act, Civil Rights Act in 1964? The answer, President Lund Lyndon B. Johnson. Okay, next question. Which black man was the first to host his own TV show in November, 1956? A black man wasn't allowed to host a TV show until 1956. That's disgusting. The fact that depending on how much melatonin you had in your skin was what they based who would host something more on than talent, skill, or anything else. All right, which black man was the first to host his own TV show in November 1956? The answer, Nat King Cole. Did anybody guess that? I know these are difficult. And listen, I'm not expecting any of us to get these right. If you do, awesome. If you don't, we all learned something today. And that's kind of the major reason why I'm doing this is if you realize how little you have any knowledge of black history at all, it is actually kind of sad and scary. So that's why I wanted us all to learn together. What primarily black female college was founded by two white women in Atlanta, Georgia? I had no idea. The answer, Spelman College. And no, we're not talking about Sabrina and her aunts. Oh, how cool would that be? <laughs> it's a whole new show. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if the original cast from Sabrina the Teenage Witch comes back and we find out they started that college? <laughs> I don't care. I love that idea. That's awesome. Moving right along. All right. Next question. Who was the first black American woman to win the Wimbledon title for tennis? Oh, yeah. That's a difficult one. I'm not sure how many people even play tennis. 
Hi, Jerry. Thanks for joining, sweetheart. Guys, remember, please share this show around. Not only because it's my show and it's the first episode, but because it's really, really important that we take a moment and talk about Black Lives Matter and all the stuff that we don't even realize we don't know. Like how many people even know what Juneteenth was a day. Like it's a big deal. So please, everybody, make sure you share it around. And let's see. Who was the first Black American woman to win the Wimbledon title for tennis? The answer? Athena Gibson. Ready? Next question. Who said this quote? If you are silent about your pain, they will kill you and say you enjoyed it. Ready? Zora Neely Hurston. And you might say to yourself, why do I give a shit? Why do I care? None of this stuff is going to help me in the, in the world. And at the same time, I say it really does matter that we know. Because it happened. Because it shouldn't be covered up. Because it's just as important as anything having to do with any other history. So, who published the newspaper, The North Star, and was a slave before? Any idea? The answer? Frederick Doug <laughs> Let's try that again. Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Holy Toledo, I couldn't say that. <laughs> Frederick Douglass. Now, does anybody know who Frederick Douglass even is? Frederick Douglass was an American social reformer, writer, statesman. He escaped from slavery in Maryland, became a national leader for the Bolinish movement in Massachusetts and New York, and does a lot of anti-slavery writing. He was born in February 1818 and died February 20th, 1895. He has several books as well. Yep. He was known to be one of the most famous intellectuals of his time, advising presidents and lecturing to thousands on a range of causes, including women's rights and Irish home rule. Look at that. Did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. Which 14-year-old black boy was murdered for whistling at a white woman in Mississippi? Answer, Emmett Till. It's disgusting. It's so sad. Who was the first black American author to win a Pulitzer Prize? Sorry, Pulitzer Award. Who is the first black American author to win a Pulitzer Award? The answer, Gwendolyn Brooks. Here we go. Let's see if you guys know this one. Which black pop star is the best-selling album of all time? What do you think? Wow, very good job, Roberta. You knew it was Till. I love that you know that. That's great. See, Jerry, we're all learning stuff, aren't we? Jerry, you didn't, you didn't get the answer right, so you posted angry face. <laughs> she was so angry, she didn't get the answer right. She put a little angry emoticon. <laughs> um, all right, so which black pop star is the best-selling album of all time? <laughs> That's right, Michael Jackson's Thriller. I love that song. It's a good song. It's a good album. Let's see. What is the famous boxer Ali's real name? 
What is the famous boxer's Muhammad Ali's real name? One more time. What is the famous boxer Muhammad Ali's real name? Think about it. Any idea? Let me know in the comment section. Ooh, Roberta, you're kicking butt. You got it again. You're right. It was Michael Jackson's album. Good job. What do you guys think? Any idea? The answer? Cassius Clay. Yeah. Who was the first black woman to speak against slavery publicly? What do you think? Kicking butt, girl. Kicking butt. Doing good. Jerry, don't get disappointed. Don't worry. It's fine if we don't know. A lot of these, if I had to guess, I wouldn't have been able to get the answer. There's no shame in it, Arlen. All right? Let's see. Who was the first black woman to speak against slavery publicly? Sojourner Truth. Now, Sojourner Truth was a former slave who became an outspoken advocate for abolition, temperance, civil and women rights in the 19th century. She really did a lot of phenomenal stuff. So, and she actually became the first woman to win a case against a white man. Think about that. Imagine, I mean, I can imagine how scary crazy that must have been for her. Um, to have to go into a white courtroom and try to win a case against a white man, that must have been a scary big deal. So imagine how much strength she had. Um, one of her best known, she's best known for one of her speeches called Ain't I a Woman that uh, she spoke and gave at, in 1851 at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention. Um, and, you know, I've definitely tried to follow along about what she's done over the course of her life because she is so fascinating and she was actually born in New York so that's pretty interesting since I am a native New Yorker um I'm, I just I, I'm so stunned to to think about a the very first black woman to sue a white man and win is just so truly incredibly awesome and definitely, if you haven't listened to or read her speech, Ain't I a Woman? Definitely amazing. And random commercials seem to be popping up within. So that was a fun moment. It startled me. Did you see me? I was like, yowza. Hey, Michael. How's it hanging? Oh, it hangs real well. <laughs> All right. We've been playing some games. And, you know, I'm doing some question and answers about uh, black history and all sorts of stuff like that. So guys, you know, if you have any questions or you want to talk about anything right now, feel free. Um, like I said, this is just my very first episode to try to show respect for what's going on to speak out because I truly believe anybody being silent right now, worrying more about themselves, their career, their pocketbooks is missing the point. We need to abolish racism right now. I mean, the fact that some of these dates that I'm reading to you are only 50 years ago and we're still not done dealing with judgment based on the melatonin in your skin makes me cry all the time. It's just, you know, it's so pathetic, honestly. We all have the ability to make it better, to say, heck no, hell no. It's not okay to give that kind of treatment. And it's, you know, it's funny. I've seen people say people are freaking out over one person. No, think about these questions. Think of, about the dates that I've given you and look how far back we're still dealing with this. The fact that there's any judgment over melatonin or, or, you know, what your hair is like. I wish I was able to add Malcolm X's speech talking about how the world basically 
makes us believe that everything about herself is wrong and disgusting and this and that when it's not. There is nothing wrong about me having whatever kind of hair this is today versus somebody else's. It doesn't matter what color my hair is. It doesn't matter what color your hair is, what color your eyes are, what color your skin is, how tall you are, how thin you are, how smart you are. As long as you're a good person, as long as your words, actions, and deeds are good. What does it matter if I have a hardcore tan or if I'm so pale I can blend in with eggshell white walls? What does it matter if your melatonin is so dark or so light? Why in 2020 are we still acting like any of that matters? We have so much to do in this world, so much to accomplish. And we all know little ones that are gonna grow up into adults. Let us not for another moment allow it to continue. That doesn't mean that we need to destroy property. It means that we need to destroy the ideas and beliefs, statements and jokes that have been perpetuated. When I was in elementary school, I guess it was first grade maybe. Our whole school was only white people. And then one black boy came into our school. And anybody who knows me knows that I don't deal or accept bullies. I don't play. This homie ain't playing. So even in first grade, I was a spooky, scary little bitch because here's this poor boy. He walks in gets his lunch, and nobody lets him sit at any of the tables. He has to go sit by himself somewhere. I'm going to be 36 years old, and I still remember how they all treated him. And I came out, looked around the room with my tray, trying to figure out why they're shunning him. I was like, oh, don't sit with him. So I went and sat with him and brought as many of my people over to that table as possible because this homie ain't playing. He didn't stick around long. His family moved again. I don't know if it was prejudice, judgment, cruelty, job transfer, I was too young. But I also remember being in maybe preschool, kindergarten, and my mom stopping at a garage sale. And there were two baby dolls. I'm still gonna cry. There were two baby dolls, exactly the same, one was white, one was black. I picked up the black one, hugged it and thought and said out loud, this is the most beautiful baby I have ever seen. I must have it. Mom said, okay. The woman who was selling the dolls tried to take it out of my hand basically and go, oh, you don't want that one. You want this one and tried to hand me the white one. My mom being epic goes, my daughter already said which one she wants as I'm clinging to the doll. She buys the doll shames the woman for even trying that bullshit with us, and we leave. I don't think anything of it. I'm too happy about my baby doll, who is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I go to school the next day for show and tell, and I got picked on, bullied, humiliated, mocked, lost friends. We're talking preschool and kindergarten, folks, for bringing in that black baby doll. It, all sorts of noises. I came home crying hysterically and never brought that doll into school again. I am white and it was over a baby doll. Imagine actually having to live 24 seven, 365 days a year with dark melatonin for your skin and having people act like that all around you. My baby doll couldn't hear the slams and the insults my heart could. And from that moment on, I have been disgusted with anyone who thinks what we look like should be a precursor for how we treat each other. I have stood between friends of mine and others for sheer only reason of the color of my friend's skin and thinking oh, I'm gonna beat him up or kill him. And this, this, this girl ain't playing. I, I wasn't allowing it and I lost my temper. And in each case, I said, shame on you. How 
dare you act like this? And I'm bringing it up because it's just not okay. It's not okay to stay silent. It's not okay to say all lives matter. If all lives matter, why are we still discussing racism at all? Let's think about that. If all lives matter, how come in 1956 or something, we had to say it's not okay to treat people and discriminate based on the melatonin in your skin? Why are we still dealing with these things? Why did a guy have to get the air crushed out of him? What does it matter what color of his skin was? What does it matter what he did for a living? We all know better. If I did that to somebody, it wouldn't be okay. I have friends that are cops. I have friends that are corrections officers. I have friends in all sorts of forms of judicial system and law enforcement. And I have friends on the other side in the streets. I, I am terrified for everyone. I am worried for all of us. I am terrified and scared and crying every day for the children who are getting treated for no other reason than the melatonin in their skin. And we're in 2020 and we're still pretending racism isn't real. We're still pretending that all lives matter. And yet we're ignoring and turning a blind eye to the fact that black people keep dying. People of other colors keep dying by the hands of brutality. Malcolm X made speeches. Martin Luther King Jr. made speeches. Sojourner Truth made speeches. Rallies and, and, and protests have gone on and on and on. How much longer until we actually say we're officially done. When is it enough for you? It's enough for me, it always has been. I don't judge people based on what they look like. I judge them based on their actions, words, deeds, energies, how they treat me. I ask everybody to take a moment and read something about somebody in history that was black, learn something today more than you and I have discussed. Share this video around, even if it wasn't the most fun we've ever had, because this topic isn't fun. And I tried to make it at least a little bit for you. Please understand that saying all lives matters is like saying everyone deserves food while you're eating food but telling a person who's been starving, yes, all lives matter. And yet, if that was absolutely true, we would not have racism anymore. We would not have to tell anybody how to treat another person. I have learned how to do takedown methods. I know many different forms of self-defense. When I worked with aggressive autistics and all forms of special needs, we had to learn takedown methods. And we learned in the very first lesson, do not put your knee, your weight on someone's back when they're lying down on the ground. Their lungs can't go like this. So if you're pushing on them to keep them down while you're pushing on their neck or their chest, you're literally killing them. That was the first thing I learned the first moment of the first day of learning takedown methods. It's simple. People breathe. If you stop it, they will die. Simple. There's no excuse for the behavior. And there's no excuse for turning a blind eye. There's no excuse for staying silent. There's no excuse for racism. There's no excuse for the KKK or the Nazi groups. There is no excuse for looking at any other nationality or origin of birth and saying one is superior over another. We all have intrinsic value and worth. We've all been lied to 
that someone is better than another. The year is 2020, and we have better things to do than keep fighting over a common sense issue, which is never judge another person based on melatonin. Never do what's being done out there. And we could get into every case, and that's not going to happen. I'm not doing that. And I can't change how you feel. I can only put my truth out there, my broken heart for all the people that have passed, for all their families that have to suffer, for every single black man, woman, and child, for every person of color that walks every single street being treated and judged immediately based on the color of their skin. The fact that we have children now that know what tear gas feels like and pepper spray feels like, what rubber bullets are like. It needs to stop now. You wouldn't want it for your child. I wouldn't want it for anyone I love. So together, we can end it. Together, we could speak the truth and say, no more racism, no more. We could look at a person who's acting like that and go, you're part of the problem. Mm -mm, I'm not dealing with you, nor am I going to acknowledge you in my world anymore. We don't have to harm, but we need to see without keeping our eyes shut to the truth any longer. I love all you guys, and I think a lot of you know. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. I think a lot of you know that I care, that I've been checking in on all of you as much as I can. So before this episode ends, please remember this is a very special episode because of what's going on in the world. Yes, I started Let's Party with Loren, the very first episode on a very deep, difficult topic. And I tried to make it at least a little interactive and at least a little interesting and entertaining for you. But I pray I got through to as many people as possible. Share this video around. Please like and follow the page. Turn on your notifications so that every time this show goes live, you'll be notified. Next week on Thursday, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have completely different games going on. I'm going to have a few guests. We're going to have drinks. We're going to smoke. We're going to have a lot of fun no matter what's going on in the world. But this episode is my way of saying I care. I'm here. I support Black Lives Matter because it matters. And I hope you'll join with me in that. Not just in words, but in deeds and actions and truth. No longer can we accept fugazi fake apologies from people who've already said racist statements. We cannot ignore and go, oh, that's just their sense of humor when certain people are posting vile things. Staying friends with these people shows that you're a racist as well. I will not have anybody in my life who thinks Black Lives Matter isn't important, who thinks that ending racism today, now, in this year of 2020, isn't extremely important for all of us. And for the sheer fact of let us please be the examples we wish to see in the world. We no longer can act and come from a place of how we were previously treated. It does not matter how we have previously been treated for one single reason when I say that, because no matter how you have been treated, no matter how I have been treated, no matter the guns that have been in our faces, no matter the screaming, no matter the knives, no matter the violence, no matter the insults, no matter what has happened in our past, the only way to move forward and change the world is to be the change we wish to see in the world. Join me by being that change. Join me 
by standing up and saying, hell no, I want to allow you or anyone else to perpetuate this further. Don't act from a place of this is what they've done to me, so I'll do it too. Be the change you wish to see in the world because sometimes we will only be the examples that others can see. And if we have no examples, how can anybody move on? So stand with me and say, we will be the example. I will be a positive example and a positive change. I will stand with the people that are hurting and being treated unjustly, no matter how I've been treated, because I will be an example for others to follow. I will walk in truth and in justice and say, I want to abolish racism now. I want the, bru the police brutality to end, because there's no excuse. I have friends who are cops and they're kind souls who would never do that stuff. So we need to remember it's based on each person's personality, not career jobs, personality, personality traits, not what they do for a living. So each individual needs to start being the example of good, of saying, no, 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 no matter what's been done to me, I hear you, but we got to be the examples so that we can have a better future. We got, so many children on this planet right now, it is up to us not to allow it to further become their problem, to add more baggage. Children who are five right now, do you really want them to be 30 having to fight this still? Aren't you upset that our previous generations didn't clean this up for us? I am. Maybe they couldn't, maybe they wouldn't. But that's why we're here now, so that we can make the change happen. My name is Loren Malloy and I stand with Black Lives Matter. My name is Loren Malloy. Truth and justice truly do matter. Basing your justice on anything other than truth and what's right doesn't make it justice. Harming others just because you're angry won't fix it. And yes, the only way that things have happened in the past is from looting and rioting. I get it. But now is the time for us to show we are the change. The change we want to see in this world, the change we want to be. So thank you all for taking the time with me. I hope you found some fun in this and at least learned a thing or two. Please make sure to like and follow Let's Party with Loren, as well as my business page, Loren Malloy, director, producer, actress, author. And please share this video around. The more people that wake up, the more people that band together, the more people that are the good examples for change, the better our world will be. And next week on Thirsty Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to play different games and it's all going to be alcohol and weed related and a lot of other goodies too. So join me every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Let's Party with Loren. And happy horrors, everyone, from me to you. We'll make it through. And I pray at the end of all of this, Racism is gone forever. It's a big wish. It's a big prayer. But together we can make that happen. Together anything is possible. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay protected. And please, be the good example the world needs. Till next week.